American Gene Technologies was founded in 2008 to become a viral vector-based company um, seeking to uh, address diseases of unmet need. And uh, we'll describe three of those today. First in our portfolio is phenylketonuria. This is a familiar uh, disease to many. It's an inherit inherited gen genetic disorder. It causes an abundance of phenylalanine raised to toxic levels in the blood. We've developed therapeutic lentivirus vectors that will, that will introduce a synthetic PAH gene, a very high expressing PAH gene, and simultaneously silence the expression of the chromosomal alleles, which are misfolding proteins that interfere with the full function of the wild type protein. Uh, this has been granted uh, orphan drug status by the FDA, and we're preparing uh, very soon to request the interact meeting with FDA. We have an outstanding clinical advisor in this program, Jerry Vockley, at the University of Pittsburgh, who's very well known as an international leader in uh, PKU clinical work and in the development of new therapeutics. A second area that I'd like to introduce is our Gamma Delta T cell immuno oncology program. The indications that we're seeking to address here are solid tumors, particularly with a focus on hepatocellular carcinoma. We've developed a family of vectors we designated immunotox. These vectors target the tumor, not the T cell. They're designed to reprogram the metabolism of the tumor and create a very potent activation of the natural gamma delta T cell response. We have a number of issued and allowed US patents in this area already, and we've had uh, really excellent progress in our uh, animal modeling of this. We have a very, very strong um, international advisory panel for scientific development of this program, and uh, including several leading experts in gamma delta T cells from around the world. Lastly, and in more detail, I'd like to talk about our functional cure program for HIV. Uh, the, this, the indication for this is persons with chronic HIV infection and for at least two years having their viremia suppressed by antiretroviral therapy. The product is a cell and gene therapeutic designed for single dose autologous treatment to achieve this func functional cure. Uh, we're very pleased to uh, tell you that the, um, the most important point news for this is that the IND will submit it this month. It's with our publishers right now. And uh, that will allow us, as I said, to become a clinical stage company. We're excited about that. We've designated three clinical trial sites for this effort. Uh, one is in Baltimore, Maryland at the University of Maryland Institute of Human Virology. Two are in Washington, D.C., one at Georgetown University, and one in a small clinic called Washington Health Institute, which is a community site for this program. Again, we feel like we've recruited really outstanding advisors to the HIV program. John Rossi is a well-known pioneer in the field of uh, gene therapy. John had an interest for many years in HIV disease and is quite excited and very positive about this product going forward as a advancement and the next step in development of, uh, of products of this type. David Hardy and Ellie Benaim were both medical officers directing previous gene therapy studies in HIV disease. David for a company called Calamune, and Ellie was a medical officer for Sangamo in their original trials. And Sham Kotalil is an extremely experienced and well-known clinical trialist with a very lengthy academic background in both HIV and hepatitis C. Just to give you a peek at the schedule, uh, so we've, uh, we, as I said, we're filing the IND this month. We expect to begin enroll by the end of the year or by January. The first part of a two-part uh, clinical trial should be completed in Q23 of 2020, and the study completion is in 2021. So what is this? So we, we designate this product AGT-103T. It's a single-dose autologous cell therapy. And the goal of this therapy is to deliver gene-modified HIV-specific CD4 T cells. And we believe that we are addressing the critical immunological defect in HIV and repairing the capacity of the immune system to make normal responses and to take over and control HIV naturally. There are three critical steps in the development of this product. First, we had to design a potent lentivirus vector because if we enrich for these types of T cells, 
We also have to protect them from being depleted by HIV. That's how HIV became established in the body and pathogenic in the first place, was by wiping out this population of cells. Second, we had to get, develop a, a reproducible and scalable process for enriching these cells to large numbers. This is a 30-year issue in HIV field and unsolved until we took it on. And last, we have to be able to make sure that these cells are transduced with the vector efficiently so then when we return them to the body, they are a durable therapeutic product. So this is the vector. Uh, it's a simple one. It has a cluster of three microRNAs on it. One microRNA downregulates CCR5, and two are designed to attack conserved regions of the HIV genome. This is very important in our particular program because uh, the, the protection against HIV and the attack on HIV RNA gives us almost equivalent protection against CCR5 and CX4 tropic viruses. So as you may know, you can't really eliminate CXCR4 on the surface of a T cell or T cell becomes non-functional. So we are protecting against several different types of HIV. And very importantly, we're also preventing that cell from releasing HIV if it happened to be a latent reservoir cell at the time of transduction. And uh, so, as I said, this is designed to create durability in this special population that we took such great pains to obtain. The process is a 12-day uh, ex vivo cell manufacturing process, and I'm showing you the highlights here. So it's a, it begins with leukapheresis, automatic processing on the uh, Clinimax Prodigy machine. And then we stimulate with a collection of synthetic peptides representing the HIV GAG protein. There's a purification step to enrich for those, followed by transduction. Very importantly, this reduces the cell number in our transduction step, and we're able to create this product with twelve dollars to $15,000 worth of vector per product. So it's economical at this point. Then we introduce a static culture phase that turned out to be a tremendous advantage for expanding these antigen-specific cells. We harvest, cryopreserve, and infuse. Infusion requires the normal type of mild conditioning with low-dose cytoxin. Importantly, the target cells that we were after all along, the HIV GAG-specific CD4 T cells that are transduced, those CD4 T cells come into us at less than one million total in the leukapheresis product. They are, they are at 10 to the minus four frequency or less in HIV positive people, and that level is insufficient to support normal immunity. So in, through this process, we get less than a million, we give you back a billion. And, uh, and this number that's in the final product exceeds our original target pro product profile by a significant amount. The process is highly reproducible. We rarely have a failure. We develop products up into the 20% of them being the HIV-specific CD4 cells and uh, putting in the, those cells in the range of approximately one times 10 to the nine per dose. That's enough to increase the uh, background frequency from what it is in a chronically infected person to increase that by 100-fold. Lastly, this process now, uh, surprisingly for a process that looks complicated, has become extremely reproducible. And that uh, panel of cell yields that I showed you, you must consider the, across the high variability of HIV positive patients. So it's quite stunningly reproducible. It's very scalable because of the introduction of the um, semi-automated manufacturing process. And uh, it's also suitable for implementation on other cell processing platforms. And as we know, many of them are coming forth now to compete with the Milteni product. And it's commercializable from the sense that this is a one and done therapy that we believe will not only endow the individual with a strong therapeutic benefit to uh, eliminate HIV cells in the body, but will actually protect you from reinfection because we've installed essentially a permanent immunity. And uh, lastly, just like to introduce very quickly um, our team and um, our advisory group here to mention them again. So um, in our team, we have uh, Irene and Kelly there that are the leading either the preclinical or clinical product development. This has been a very strong group that's also taking on the regulatory activities of the company and was instrumental in the preparation of the IND. 
Haishan is the uh, cell, T cell expert in the crew, and Tyler is a viral vector expert. They combine to develop this process and troubleshoot it through about a dozen iterations of failed ways to do this until we found the right way. And our advisory group down there below, I've already spoken to them. So uh, lastly, mention that uh, we're very pleased to have entered into a research collaboration with the National Institute of Health. Um, they, were, uh, they were quite interested in accessing this product and to begin to make these products in, in their laboratory using a small scale process and to explore the function and mechanisms of action. One thing we can tell you about these products is during the manufacturing process, whether it's at lab scale or commercial scale, we see a steady decrease in the burden of HIV DNA throughout the entire process. We believe this is related to a cytotoxic potential of the CD4 T cells when we expand them to this level, and we think this will be another important feature when we reintroduce these by infusion into the patient. So thank you very much. <laughs>